Hello friends, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for clicking on the video. I'm sorry it's been a long time again. Um, I am preparing to record a very, very personal video to, uh, to talk about myself, um, my life, my personal goals. Um, that's if I don't chicken out. But if I don't chicken out, I'm going to post that video next week, I think. Um, but this, um, this is a video about uh, many of the latest perfumes that I've been enjoying or trying. Um, not all those that I've tried recently I've enjoyed, but most of these are fragrances which are somewhat new to me and which I really love. Um, and I think I've got 13 to talk about, but I'm going to talk about others incidentally as well. So I'm not going to dwell very long on each one, but I'm quite excited to, to attempt to get back into the swing of talking about perfume. Um, I know I'm not very good at it and I'm trying to get better. And the only way I can do that is through practice. Um, but what I want to tell you is um, uh, I'm kind of I'm becoming a bit more experimental in my tastes and I'm deliberately going out of my comfort zone a bit. There are certain notes. Um, and certain sort of fragrance characters that I always like. I like vanilla, I like sweet fragrances, I like typically feminine fragrances. But I increasingly appreciate what I'm going to call fine perfumery, very well blended, superior quality perfumery. Um, and so that that's, I'm kind of, I've been having a, a great time doing a bit of experimenting and trying things which are new to me and also making new discoveries about my own tastes. And in particular, I found I, I have um, recently discovered a love for rose, one rose in particular, which to my great surprise I've fallen in love with, which is Delina Exclusive by Parfum de Mali. Um, I've mentioned it before last year. Um, I've had th this little sample of Delina Exclusive I've had now for more than three years, I reckon, for as long as I've had my Delina sample. I still don't like Delina, I still can't wear it. Um, could appreciate it on others but it doesn't suit my chemistry but this uh, over this past spring and summer I've fallen madly in love with Delina Exclusive when I just got it out of the drawer to try it again out of curiosity. It's um, a beautiful rose fragrance with a prominent note of vanilla. I would describe it as a vanillic rose and I think that's what makes all the difference to me because if you watch me before you know I love vanilla. Um, so and I, I do love this rose um, and primarily um, in terms of the notes I primarily get that beautiful vanillic rose with just a touch of nutmeg in the background and that's mainly what I get. Um, and depending which website you look at you get a different note profile. Some will tell you it has pear, incense, oud, um, but that's mainly what I get. Rose, vanilla and nutmeg. I absolutely love it and I actually want a bottle of it. Um, my only fear is that because I've had this sample for more than three years, I wonder if it's changed a bit in the meantime. Um, I hope not. But I'm saying that because wonderful Mila Leblanc, um, the Russian lady, I, I love all her videos. She's just a great person. I would watch her talking about anything. Um, she has always loved the original Delina. And uh, in a recent video, she said she got a new bottle and she thinks it's much weaker and doesn't last as long. And she reckons it's been reformulated. So I hope not. I hope that wouldn't, I hope that doesn't mean that Delina exclusive has been reformulated so that if I actually bought a new bottle, I'd be disappointed. I hope not. Anyway, but that is on my wish list. Um, and that has kind of got me into the swing of looking at rose perfumes. Uh, so several of these that I'm going to talk about are rosy perfumes, but not all of them. Um, and actually just very recently and for the first time, I, I, had, I properly tried Delina de la Rose, the fresh flanker. And I didn't like that at all. That just that would not work for my skin chemistry at all. I thought it was um, oddly synthetic and chemically, but I'm blaming my chemistry. It just didn't work. So uh, Delina de la Rose doesn't work. The original Delina doesn't work for me, but I love Delina Exclusive. So off the back of that, I tried Damask by Oman Jean, which I, I don't have a sample of, but I tried it in a local department store. Um, and that's a, a beautiful Damask Rose fragrance described as a fruity rose. And I think the fruit is black currant and lemon. Um, the, the it has a lemon top note which frankly didn't work on my skin um that's lemon is not a great note on my skin so that that one hasn't worked for me but i appreciated trying it and i'm increasingly trying more almond jane fragrances that's a brand that i'm really interested in but sticking with the rose for now um i then tried Unfit de berlin by serge lutin and i was um, inspired to try this by gabby the fragrantician 
um, this is a powerful voluminous red rose unmistakable red rose um, and it has patchouli and I I knew I was taking a risk I, I blind bought this rather large um, travel size from the brand <coughs> um, and unfortunately the patchouli is too much to be honest too much in the dry down on my skin but I do wear this occasionally and I, I let my mother try it and she likes it so I, I might actually give it to my mother um, but yeah beautiful powerful red rose okay ah and then um, another rose which I have much more recently tried and this is totally out of my comfort zone um, Rose on my yard, the extra by Atelier des Ors. And I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the name of the fragrance wrongly. I meant to look that up. <laughs> um, this is a Rose Oud, which is a, a classic um, combination in perfumery, Rose and Oud. Um, it's one that, a, a, a combination that I have hitherto completely gravitated away from. Not my type of thing. However, I find this, you know, I, now I'm going out of my comfort zone and trying new things. I gave it a try. Um, it's surprisingly wearable for me it's still not completely my type of thing and I, I don't want to have a bottle of this one but it's a soft wearable oud and a beautiful rose I think this is I think this has to be a very nice example of the ruse the <laughs> rose oud genre um, so I like that um, then this next one also still sticking with Atelier des Ors now this is one of their newest releases via Premier Rose um, I love this. I actually love this. Um, this is another one that's out of my comfort zone because it has a significant touch of leather. It's a beautiful light rose, not a, not a voluminous in your face red rose. I believe it has May rose in the mid notes and then it has a beautiful smooth sweet leather. Um, and leather I would is another one that I would gravitate away from but this is a beautiful elegant fragrance to me personally I think it leans feminine I'm sure the right sort of man could pull it off and it would be extremely elegant um, <clears throat> but I think it just goes towards uh, feminine for me um, I've only worn it properly twice the first time I was indifferent to it and then I wore it yesterday and I loved wearing it and now I'm going to wear it more um, and I think you can amplify that leather effect with an elegant leather jacket um, it has it's a, a sweet fragrance a moderately sweet fragrance and the sweetness is coming from the florals and from the leather which of course is a quite a sweet note um, that's very beautiful and I'm enjoying trying that I've become very excited about the brand Atelier des Ors and uh, about the perfumer Marie Salamania I think she's fantastic um, then oh yes I'm just going to mention incidentally um, another leather one which is only a sample in my collection is uh, La Capitale by Zerjoff which I got last year and that is um, a, a sweet candied strawberry with leather almost like strawberry laces if you could actually do your shoes up with them um, and that one I, I call that dominatrix barbie um, this one this beautiful fragrance uh, via primrose by atelier des Ors, it's a more refined more elegant type of a leather um, you know I, I kind of I, I quite like wearing la capitale but I much prefer that one I much prefer that one I might I might that might even be on my wish list which is amazing for me to say that anyway okay now I'm I, I'm, I'm so bad at this and I'm so out of practice I've made copious notes to keep me in order so where am I supposed to be up to now ah yes another rosy one and this was a recommendation by a friend Ihab hello if you're watching and um, this is opera by Zerjov I just mentioned Zerjov and this is opera um, my friend told me that he smelled this on a queen <clears throat> wow so I thought okay I'm going to try that <laughs> with a very strong recommendation um, this is a fragrance um, it's another rosy fragrance it's a bit fruity um, it's also a bit leathery and it has a, a powerful patchouli in the base and unfortunately that patchouli is a bit too strong for me um, the patchouli reminds me of the patchouli note in Queen of Silk um, the new release by Creed and I, I didn't like that one too much patchouli um, I got a you know I sprayed that on a card in a department store and then it stunk out my handbag until I could get rid of that patchouli um, so th this one it's a highly respectable opera 
Um, it's not really for me, but I may, I may still wear it now and again. And I've certainly enjoyed wearing that. So thank you, Ehab. Um, okay, going back to Atelier des Ors, I'm going to talk about Ah, let's talk about this one first. This is Pink Me Up. Um, this is not a new release. I think it was released towards the end of 2022 and I can remember watching a live stream of Claire, the, the Smurfy girly, talking about it then. And I wanted to try it and never got round to it. Finally tried it uh, just this past summer. Um, Pink Me Up, that is. Um, it's a, a very fun fragrance. It's a, it's a quality fragrance. It, it puts me in mind of two others. Um, <clears throat> um, it actually, on initial spray, it put me in mind of Mont Paris by Yves Saint Laurent, the, the original Eau de Parfum release. Um, but it's, it's so much better than that. It's, um, it's very like that with that um, sort of red berry fruits and sweetness with a, a little balsamic quality. It's really like a much better uh, fine perfumery version of Mont Paris, much much better than it. Um, but it, it also in uh, some ways puts me in mind of um, Coco Mademoiselle, maybe because of the type of patchouli that's in this, which is a much more manageable patchouli for me. So if I had to, I would de describe it as a cross between Mont Paris and Coco Mademoiselle, but better than, better probably better than that sounds. Um, probably not worth the, the price tag, honestly, because if you like this, then Mon Pari would do, but it's enjoyable, um, feminine, a bit fun, but also kind of professional at the same time. And I actually, um, I wore it in court recently. <laughs> so I might, I might be telling you about that soon. If, if I um, have the courage to make a, a video about my personal life, I'll tell you why I was in court in July. But so that's a nice bit of fun, Mon, um, pink me up. Okay, and another Atelier des Arts is one of their another the uh, another of their newest releases um yep uh, another of their newest releases which i think was released alongside uh, via prima rosa which is blue motherland this is beautiful um i wasn't so taken with it when i first tried it but it's grown on me and it, it really works beautifully with my chemistry um i'm not sure if i want a bottle of it because there's others that I want more but I wouldn't be offended in the least if somebody just gave me a bottle of it Blue Madeleine um, and it has a nice literary reference I believe um, it's a reference to Proust's novel I think um, A la recherche de temps perdu In search of lost times I'm sorry for my terrible French and I haven't read that one but I know um, you know I know it's a kind of cultural reference the scene in that book where um, either Proust or the narrator in the book is remembering being a little boy and eating a madeleine which was dipped in his auntie's tea um, and I think she wasn't eating a madeleine because she was fasting before holy mass if I remember correctly unless I've invented that um, as you're supposed to supposed to fast for a period of time before you receive holy communion so his auntie was just having a cup of black tea but he was allowed to dip a madeleine cookie in the tea and that is what this fragrance smells like it's a beautiful fragrance of black tea with vanilla and lemon um, and it's a, a lovely example of fine perfumery uh, creating a gourmand. It's a, a very elegant gourmand um, and I don't normally like tea fragrances at all. I'm not particularly interested in the scent of tea but this is, this is the first tea fragrance that I've really liked. And it, yes, it has that characteristic scent of black tea with a dominant citrus. So I'm not sure if there's a slice of lemon in the tea or if the lemon is in the madeleine, along with a beautiful vanilla. Um, the vanilla on my skin is beautiful. And actually, as I'm sn sniffing my sample more and more, I think I'm, I think I'm loving this more and more. Actually, maybe I do want a bottle of it. Um, so I think that's fantastic. I'm very impressed with the Telia Um And I think. Yeah, I think now I'll, I'll mention some other um, Atelier des Arts. Um, this is um, Lune Feline. This is absolutely beautiful, absolutely delicious, sweet, resinous vanilla. And I'm kind of ashamed of myself because I've had this sample for around three years since um, 
Yes, towards the end of 2021, I went on a kind of vanilla odyssey, mainly on um, Instagram, where I was looking for a vanilla which I might love more than Guerlain's Spiritus Double Vanille. And I, I still have a soft spot for Spiritus Double Vanille, but it's more kind of emotional than anything else. Um, Anyway, so so at the time I tried Lune Feline because I must have been searching for vanilla fragrances on the internet and it came up as a recommendation and I didn't give it anywhere near as good a chance as I should have. Um, I think I maybe I smelt it once or twice and I decided it was too resinous and I didn't like it as much as Spiritus Double Vanille. Well, it's better than it. It's, I don't know, I must have... Thank goodness I must have matured in some way in three years because it's an absolutely delicious vanilla. Um, I think a man or a woman could wear it, but on a woman it's fabulously feminine, womanly rather than girly. Um, absolutely lovely. So that one, Lune for Lean now, is definitely on my wish list now that I've woken up to how fabulous that is. Um, and then some others that I've tried recently. Um, it was falling in love with Lune for Lean um, and, find, and trying um, Blue Madeleine because it had long been on my list of newly released fragrances this year to try. Um, it's, it made me really intrigued about the brand Atelier des Or, and that's why I went on to try uh, the others that I've mentioned, Via Prima Rosa and um, Rose on Yard. I'm sorry if that's pronounced wrong. Um, so I got one of those um, sample kits and I think they're very generous. Um, and they make it very easy for you to try before you buy, as it were, with one of these sample kits. Um, so the others that came in that kit, which I wanted to try, are um, uh, Nuda Veritas. Now this is um, a, a fresh fragrance. I'm sorry to say this one did not work for me at all, um, Nuda Veritas. This is another of their newest ones, and that's my skin chemistry. It's just not my type of thing. Did not work on my skin at all. Um, I also tried Choix des Anges. Um, this is a sort of light and easy to wear but warm fragrance. Um, very unisex. I wasn't taken with it to be honest but it was more wearable for my skin chemistry than Nuda Veritas. Um, and then the other one is Musque Martel which is exactly as it's described. A powerful um, kind of oriental musk and immortel. And that's not really my type of thing either, but I respect it. Um, okay. Uh, I mentioned Loon Feline. Ah, and um, yes, and earlier on I mentioned uh, Damask by Ormond Jane, and Ormond Jane being a, a brand that I'm getting into more and more and just kind of passively trying more and more. Um, well, what uh, sparked my interest really in Ormond Jane, I think, was... Um, I wanted to try Levant, their fragrance Levant, um, because wonderful Claire again mentioned her earlier. Um, Claire the Smurfy Girlie uh, a little while ago was talking about Levant, so I wanted to try it. And I'm very lucky that just five minutes from where I live that is de there's a department store which has, it, it's only a small shop floor, but it has some quite impressive, um, quite an impressive range of niche brands, including Armand Jane. So I merrily went there and tried Levant. Um, it's beautiful. Um, it's a, another moderately sweet, um, I think it's feminine fragrance. Um, I made a little note of the of the notes because um, I have been in, I have been to the department store and smelled it several times, but not for a little while. So it's not fresh in my mind. But it, it has a beautiful um, tangelo top note, tangelo and mandarin orange in the top notes, and it's it's a beautiful mellow citrus. It's not there's no sharpness in the citrus at all, which I can't wear. Like I said, I can't wear. Um, I found that I couldn't wear damask because of that sharp lemon note. But this in Levant, this uh, tangelo and mandarin orange top note together, beautiful um, on my skin. And then in the mid notes, it has a uh, peony and in the dry down, musk, cedar and amber. And that is a beautiful fragrance. I was tempted to get one of their travel sizes actually. Um, in that. Uh, but my only disappointment was with that was that it didn't last long on my skin. That may be personal to me. Um, it I, I just kind of ceased to notice it after two or three hours. Um, but I do like Levant very much. So thank you for that, Claire. Um, and okay, so and this is so we're getting away now from the brands that I've already mentioned. 
Um, uh, this one that I've been trying recently is Granada by Memo Paris. Um, and it wasn't the first time, I, I mean, I, I obtained this new sample this summer, but it wasn't the first time I tried it. I first tried it a couple of years ago um, on the recommendation of a YouTuber who was mentioning this one, Granada, as a orange blossom fragrance that, you know, in, was in one of her uh, top 10 orange blossom fragrances lists. And I love orange blossom. Um, and another one that was also a recommendation of hers as an orange blossom fragrance and by the same brand Memo Paris is Sintra. Um, so, and I tried Granada first and when it turned up I was disappointed because I, I expected it to smell like Sintra does based on what the reviewer had said. So I think that um, in all fairness I think she'd got them mixed up actually in the way she was describing them. Um, Sintra which I've talked about before on my channel I think in the, the last video I posted is an intense um, syrupy honeyed orange blossom fragrance. Granada is quite different. Um, it has the orange blossom in there but it's um, it's dominated by other florals um, and I mainly get um, jasmine and heliotrope with a grenadine top note um, and it's this again is going a little out of my comfort zone to prefer such a floral fragrance and I, I think I you know it wasn't my thing two years ago and I was disappointed that it didn't resemble Sintra but now I really appreciate Granada um, <clears throat> like I said it's got those floral notes and that's where it gets its sweetness from supplemented by the grenadine top note I guess it has to have grenadine that's good maybe that's why it's called Granada um, I think it, it's quite beautiful it doesn't last very long but I've had a, I've enjoyed a flirtation this summer with this fragrance and it actually smells like summer 2024 to me now. Um, and this, this sample's used up, but I, it's, just, it's nice to, <laughs> now that we're in the depths of autumn here in the UK, it's nice to sniff this and remember summer. Um, okay, and uh, along those lines as well, uh, another fragrance from this past summer and another recommendation um, from Ehab. Um, is by Rado's Mojave Ghost um, and he reminded me to try this and it, had, it was all ready for a long time on my to try list. Um, uh, this um, possibly has a cult status, a lot of people like this. I've heard at least one person say she wore it on her wedding day. Um, it's the Mojave Ghost to me smells like clean linen and musk. Um, so very easy to wear, uh, very pleasant Honestly, not really my type of thing because it's not perfumey enough for me. I like perfume to smell like perfume. Um, and this does smell like clean linen and musk. Um, I mean, you could almost, you know, you could sprinkle it on your clean linen to amplify that effect. Um, it's, it's lovely, uh, very nice to wear in a warm atmosphere. And as Ihab said, it does something on the skin. It, um, it's kind of greater than the sum of its parts. It has a magical effect on the skin and it lasts wonderfully. And you know, you leave a, a nice trail of the scent of fresh linen. Um, so I'm, you know, I, it's not my type of thing. It's out of my comfort zone, but I have enjoyed wearing it. And I will probably eventually use up this little miniature that I got. Um, uh, this one um, is a, a new release from the exclusives line of Chanel, Comet by Chanel. I've um, got to say, for me, this was a disappointment. Um, I was expecting to really like it, but it, it's, um, it falls a bit flat on me. Um, I thought I would like it because of the um, note profile. Um, it has cherry blossom, iris, heliotrope and musk. And I thought, well, um, I've, I've said before purple florals are not my favorite iris and heliotrope are not my favorite but um but again going out of my comfort zone and uh, appreciating different things more i am tending to like them more and both iris and heliotrope i'm tending to like more and of course the heliotrope is very significant in granada and i like i said i like that but this one, uh, Comet, I expected it to be much more feminine, but I find that the way it's blended, those, the, that beautiful note profile, the way it's blended is not so feminine. It's very unisex. Um, and on a, on a woman, it's very formal, I think, straight-laced, um, with suit office attire. Um, it's not as playful and feminine and classic as I hoped it would be. Um, 
I might give that to my mother, I'm not sure. Um, or maybe I'll give it another couple of goes, but there we go. I've got, I was curious about it, so I got this tiny little, um, tiny little miniature, and that's, it's okay. Um, and, oh, I think this is the last one. Now you, you could say from going, uh, from talking about a Chanel exclusive to this designer fragrance, you might say it's going from the sublime to the ridiculous, but this is a fragrance, which is another one that I've laterally fallen in love with. Um, it's My Way Parfum, Parfum by Giorgio Armani. Um, and I've had this tiny little miniature since early last year. Let's see if, is it gonna come out in one piece? I don't think so. I've lost the lid now, never mind. Okay, My Way Parfum. Um, uh, it's, it's the quality is not there, but I really like this fragrance. Um, it's, I think it's by far the best in the line. Um, the original My Way is a very pleasant, modern tuberose and orange blossom fragrance, but it's frankly boring. It's a very boring designer fragrance. And all of the other flankers, including the newest one, is it Nectar? I've forgotten what it's called, is honestly boring. Um, and very, you know, not like a not like an example of fine perfumery. Um, but I I really think that this um, My Way Parfum, which was released very early last year, I think, um, is the the best in the line. Um, the quality is not there, but there's just something about this. I just can't stop sniffing this. Um, I was kind of more ambivalent to it when I first tried it, when I first obtained this little miniature last year. But for some reason this summer I've fallen in love with this. Um, and I would say, uh, I, I, heard a, I heard a reviewer describe it as a tuberose bomb. Well, I would say um, as, as, soon as, as soon as you spray it, there's like a, a triad of tuberose, jasmine and orange blossom, and they're very well blended together. So they're all um, highly distinct and yet they're taking the edge off each other. That's how I would describe it. And then in this flanker, there's a beautiful backbone of iris. And I've been really enjoying that, um, you know, like I said, to my surprise, really enjoying a, an iris or oris, might be more appropriate to call it oris um, fragrance. So the quality is not there, it doesn't last very long, um, but I can't stop sniffing it. Um, and I, I don't, th it's not on my wish list, but I wouldn't be offended if somebody gave me a bottle of it. Uh, so there we go. Um, so I hope that was um, a little interesting rundown, I hope, of uh, my recent fragrance loves. Um, some new discoveries and some um, sort of rediscoveries or new discoveries about my own taste. Um, I can like rose fragrances, I can like iris and heliotrope, um, I can go outside my comfort zone um, and I'm more and more appreciative of what I'm going to call fine perfumery. Um, I'm not going to say niche, um, niche, but nobody can define what niche means. Um, but I'm, I'm more and more appreciative of fine blending, fine ingredients, um, mass appeal combined with originality. Um, uh, I, think, I think maybe my tastes are improving. You know, I, I still love certain designer fragrances, but even my, um, I've, I've always liked Mont Galan. Um, the original Eau de Parfum, and I still do, but even it starts to look a bit rough around the edges the more I get into perfumery and the more I experiment and um, gravitate towards fine perfumery. Um, so so I hope that was a nice little rundown. It was um, nice for me to try to get back into the swing, um, and I, I hope to see you soon, hopefully with a personal video, and uh, to introduce myself a bit and um, let you get to know me if you want to, um, and tell you about some of my personal goals which you might help me with. Uh, so uh, I wish you all the very best um, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care.